We welcome you to Philly's Post Game Live, presented by our friends at Cure Auto Insurance. I'm Michael Barkan, along with Ricky Vitalico and Ben Davis. In a moment, we go to the booth. We talk about everything in this 9-5 Phillies opening day win. And I know at points, Ricky Bo and Ben, it was not pretty, notably the seventh inning. We thought they might have won in a walkaway. Did not happen. But you got to be happy with the way it ended today. Let's take a snapshot of what everybody thought this was going to be. Well, maybe you could have some good Aaron Nola, but every once in a while he's going to make that one bad pitch. Shh, snapshot, perfect, right? Well, the Phillies offense was exactly what you expected. They scored nine runs, so that's good there too. The bullpen I thought was pretty good. Sure but, was. And then all of a sudden you look at the defense. You had two errors, one on Stott, one on Hoskins. So I think we got exactly what we expected in, in this first game. But – Bottom line is, regardless of the two errors, Nola gives up a three-run homer later on in the ball game. You still win the ball game, and right? What's the bottom line after game one? You're one and zero. One and zero, and you on just pace for one sixty-two and zero, Ricky. One sixty-two you know, and zero. I don't think that's ever happened. But you know what? The Phillies do have a shot as it's much happening. as any other team. Okay, Ben. Yes. When you look at this, the bullpen. Ricky mentioned that uh, Aaron Nola ERA of six. It belied a little bit the way he pitched because he was strong early. Maybe a manager's hook might have helped him out, although he was in about 65 pitches at that point. Yeah, I think maybe maybe gone one too too many innings out there. But early on, let's, let's look at the positive of Aaron Nola today. The fastball command was on point. Glove side down and away to righties. It was on point able to run that little two seamer off the hip of some lefties had that get a couple caught looking he was good early on I think he was a little bit fatigued that last at bat the three run homer to Brown eight pitches five of which were off speed four curveballs and a change up I think Brown was looking for that pitch he got it and went up top to make it a, a just a two run ball game at the time but overall I liked what I saw out of Aaron Nola and this offense get used to it fans it's going to happen a lot for the first time this season we check in with the boys in the booth Tom McCarthy Ruben Amaro Jr. and John Cruck great to see the three of you you called a magnificent game today as usual at least that's how you wrote it what what uh, <laughs> what do you think Tommy how, how well, did it go for you. First thing, it went great. Second thing, uh, Ben, terrible Dan Baker impersonation for somebody who grew up in Philadelphia. Remember I wasn't we, trying uh, to do it. Uh, uh, <laughs> you sounded like you were trying to do yeah, it. Sounded, sounded like you were trying to do it. Uh, this was great today. It was great. I mean, everything about it, the weather, the atmosphere, the curtain call in the first sitting, everything was great yeah, today. Yeah, there was a different electricity in the ballpark that we've uh, seen for and heard for quite some time. And uh, I, I think it starts right with the first guy uh, in the lineup and, and making it happen. It was a, it was an exciting time, a lot of pageantry, uh, but but they uh, they delivered and, and it you know made it really exciting for the fans. Let, let's go to the hitter in the group. I'll go to John Kruk on this one. Kruk, he went. Oh. When, <laughs> Ruben, good. Hey, hey by not, the way, no, no getting on Ben. He's on he's my team lying. today. All right. He's uh, not lying. That's Anyways, <laughs> Crucky, how much easier does it make it when you know that if, all right, let's say you got a runner, runner in scoring position, you don't get on base, and then you know there's guys behind you that could mash. I mean, uh, how, how much easier does that make it in a season-long run? Well, I, you know, I, I played on, what the heck? What was that? I, that was a big cheer for John Crook. <laughs> da 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 <laughs> uh, uh, It's spring training for everyone. What the heck the is that? I don't know. <laughs> Have you Go guys ahead. had too different many Yankees already? Different already? We no, we're, we're, we're I getting there, though. Me. Was it me? No, what was you. the question? It was not me. What was the question? I'm okay. just saying, John, if you're up there hitting with runners in scoring position, you have a bad at bat, that how much funny. easier does it make it in the long run knowing that you have hitters behind you that can mash? Well, as the season goes on, the pitchers on the other teams are going to notice this stuff. And, and you know, you're going to get pitched to differently as the season goes on because the guy behind you is so dangerous. And, and that that's what I mean. And, and the impressive thing today, you know, Bryson Stott had a rough inning defensively. Uh, you know, they only had the one error, but could have had two on the throw to Reese. But, uh, you know, then he comes back up against the lefty and doubles in a run. I, it, it, this team, if they can, and they will, if they trust each other and pass the torch to the next guy, Look, you're still going to have guys when you make it out go up in the tunnel and destroy stuff. You know, it's just <laughs> part of life. But if you can trust the next guy, they're going to score more runs because they'll take walks. Bryce doesn't have to be the hero every night. Uh, you know, Castellanos doesn't have to be the hero every night. Schwarber doesn't have to be. This lineup, one through nine, uh, you know, they, they had some great at-bats today. And 
if you can trust the guy behind you and trust the guy in front of you, that you, the, the guy in front of you can pass the torch to you knowing that I'm going to deliver for you. And then if you don't do it or you end up walking without chasing pitches out of the zone and getting yourself out, then you pass on the guy behind you, and that's when you see a bunch of crooked numbers. Uh, all right, well, your thoughts, Ricky, on Aaron Nola and um, how he finished today because he started how he great. Finished. He, he did start great. I mean, he was 20 out of 23 first pitch strikes. That, it's getting ahead, right? We said three, three keys to Aaron Nola. Get ahead, stay ahead, and finish, right? First five innings, he was fine with all three of those things. Well, get ahead, stay ahead, he was okay with. And then finishing became a big problem later on that inning. When, when you look at the seventh inning, it, him sitting in the dugout for a long period of time, I think that kind of threw him off a little bit because I, I thought that his tempo was very good, very good, and then he got out there for the seventh. I was a little concerned that he might even be out there. I was like, why bother at this point? You know, you got a nice, nice uh, lead. You have a bullpen that probably could use some innings. Why not just switch him up at this point? But he so made that. So you do think that? Yeah, but I mean, that's that's still, you know looking from behind I, I just look at it this way that he already gave you six strong innings what did you really need that seventh from him today eh, it, you know what it does I, I mean to me Aaron Nola is one of those guys that you want to have confidence right he had confidence building it was building building build all of a sudden that's all shot now no matter how, how many times you look at it his numbers look fantastic everything was going well kept the ball on the ground a lot of ground balls he had his seven strikeouts and, and then all of a sudden everything kind of goes by the wayside in that seventh inning the question is Ben should we have expected Joe Girardi to feel that way and to curtail the afternoon perhaps before he might have otherwise yeah I thought maybe Joe would have gone and gotten him because of that long inning but it's the, the getting up and down in between innings that's the toughest part these guys aren't used to doing that it was a curtailed spring training these guys yeah, anybody can go and throw 65 straight pitches in, in a bullpen right but it's the getting up and down you go sit down you come back out you take your eight warm-up pitches you pitch that inning you go sit down and rinse and repeat and they're not accustomed to doing that. It fatigues you more than you think. Until you get your sea legs, uh, you're going to get winded. And I think that's what happened with Aaron today. I think, obviously, hindsight's always 20-20. But I thought I, – I wasn't expecting Noel to go back out. Yeah, I'm interested in Joe Girardi's hindsight and whether he comments on that. Here is the skipper post game. Basically, Joe, to start out the way you guys did and then tack on, just took up the way the guys kind of came through on both ends of the game. Yeah, and, and the great thing about that is – you know, we had the lead, and then they got close, and we tacked on runs, and guys had good at-bats all day long. Um, everyone contributed. All nine guys contributed offensively. Um, there weren't necessarily a lot of home runs, a lot of base hits, big base hits with runners in scoring position. And, and to me, you know, sometimes you have to manufacture runs like that, and our guys did a great job. Is that kind of what you imagine life could be like with uh, Schwarber at the top of the lineup? Yeah, I, when you think about his at-bats, you know, it was 3-2 the first at-bat, 3-2 the second at-bat. Um, I think there was a walk in there. Um, so, I mean, base hit off a of lefty. Um, he hits left-handers, right-handers. It is kind of what we imagined. And um, when we were able to add Nick, it kind of changed our thinking with Kyle, what we were going to do with him. Was it impressive to you that after a difficult seventh inning, um, for stop in the field, yeah. and he had that eighth, and he made a couple of plays that swung pretty good. I mean, what did that kind of say about him that he held it together? It says that he's pretty mature and can turn the page. You know, I, I went up to him, I said, outstanding, you know. I mean, because that's not easy, right? Opening day, you probably got jitters anyway. You get two really tough plays, um, you know, and, and he's not able to, to make them. Um, he ain't going to play like that all spring, right? So it's something we'll continue to work on him with, but um, – says a lot. I mean, Snead's really tough on left-handers. I mean, really tough. And, and to see him do that, make the two plays right out of the gate, says a lot about his maturity. 15 of the at-bats today were five pitches or more. Do you see that more as a product of Castellanos and Schwarber's presence in the lineup, or is it something that has been a priority that maybe Kevin has been? Well, Kevin with? always preaches that. And I think it's, it is a priority for us to grind out at-bats and not to make quick outs and, and to get your pitch and square it up. You might get it the first pitch, you may not get it to the fourth or fifth pitch, but I think it's the type of lineup that we have. We have uh, more patient hitters. Um, you know, you look at, you know, Bryson's at bats. I mean, he sees pitches, he does. You look at Veerling's at bat, he saw pitches today. You know, he hit the ball hard three times and, 
you know, only had the sack fly to show for it. But his at-bats were really good. I think it's a, it's a product of our lineup is dangerous, and pitchers are going to be careful somewhat. How impressed were you with Sir Anthony? Really good. Um, you know, that was not necessarily my plan to use him in the eighth today, but because we had to get through the seventh with Familia in hand, um, it's something I've talked about. I think we have options, you know, depending on how our pitchers are used, that guys are, that are really used to pitching in the back end. Um, you know, Sir Anthony's used to pitching in the back end. So it was, it was great to see for Sir Anthony. I mean, he's been through a lot, right? And to come out and get us three big outs like that, um, impressive. Nola was, you know, so good for six. Yeah. Did he kind of just, you know. I think he just got a little bit tired, probably. Um, you know, it's, it's, you're trying to, to stretch guys out a little bit. Um, you know, he had done really well through six. It's the first time he's been up for the seventh. He was up for the sixth his last outing. Um, he had done pretty well in that part of the lineup, and it just seemed like he started to get the ball up a little bit, and um, they made him pay. See, see pitches. Um, can that have a stabilizing effect after you know that seventh inning where you come out and you know you're going to make a pitcher work? And, and I think it can. I think it you know lets our pitchers know that they don't have to be perfect. You know this is an offense that can score runs, um, and it probably relaxes them a little bit. But you know every pitcher goes out there and doesn't want, ever want to give up a run. But to know that we have the ability to come back and tack on is really important uh, for winning games. Did it almost seem like? I'm sorry. It's okay. Go ahead. Did you, give any like thought to, <laughs> <laughs> um, did you give any thought to pulling Nola after the Murphy double? Um, no. Um, just because I had liked how he was throwing the ball. Um, and we kind of had a plan where we were going to go to Familia. Um, and again, we're trying to get our guys. And, and look, I don't want to risk a game, but one double doesn't really change what I thought. But once I saw the next base hit, then I was like, okay, let's really get familiar going. And he was coming out no matter what, um, probably after the home run, unless he got a double play. I was just wondering, like, in spring training, we had so much talk about the pop in this lineup and adding Schwarber as a big piece, and then seven pitches in, he puts him in the seat. Did it almost feel like, like storybook to you? Yeah. Seeing point of the dugout and all? Yeah, yeah. Um, just so great to see. And you think about, like, the spring training wasn't very long for our guys, and it was even shorter for him and Castellanos. And Nick gets a huge double. I think that was the seventh inning, I think he has doubled, to put us up seven to five. I mean, that's a huge base hit after they had rallied. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of how you probably draw up your first day, right? <laughs> Joe, seemed pretty aggressive on a base pass. That's something that you would intend to see going forward well yeah I want our guys to to take smart chances right um, and you know they were they were a little aggressive today and I think it's the excitement of the day right I think it's the excitement of the day um, but I think we have a pretty good base running team